Hey, what's happening YouTube? Thanks for stopping back into the channel today, right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. I know the content has been just a little bit sparse lately, especially when it comes to the contact on the Duramax, but today we're going to make up for that because we got a lot of catching up and some maintenance to do on the big old truck here. We're going to be going through stuff that I've been going through lately on it and uh, take care of some of the battery issues that it's got today, so stay tuned. Alright, so the good old Duramax, it's still been my everyday driver, going back and forth from work and to the store and everything else that we need to do with it, but as you guys know from the last couple of videos, you know that I switched jobs, and now, honestly, I'm not having to drive it nearly as much. I'm flying down to Alabama, uh, doing a couple of local things here, but not having to drive it very often, so it's honestly has been sitting a little bit more than it's used to. It'll sit for about two, three, four days here and there, and unfortunately, after sitting for about four days, I go to start it, and it will not start. So I know we've got an issue with the battery, probably some kind of a drain. Uh, we're gonna check both of the batteries today, disconnect them, and let's see what's up with those. Uh, I know we've got a couple of other issues, but we're gonna go through those, maybe not in this video, but in the upcoming videos as well. We have to start somewhere, so right now, we're gonna start with the batteries. So first steps first, because we're working on a diesel here on the old Duramax, they do have two batteries. And to be able to test each one of the batteries in the system, we're gonna have to isolate the batteries from each other to be able to test them properly. If you put a battery tester on uh, the whole system right here, even if you have one dead battery, it's gonna tell you that you have a good system. So we want to do away with that. So we're gonna to have to disconnect at least one of the batteries from it. So uh, the one over here on the passenger side, pretty much the easier one to get to. We're gonna unhook the ground cable from that one to be able to test each one of the batteries individually. All right, now for testing battery number one, it is the one here on the driver's side. We're gonna be using our Bluetooth battery tester from SP, not because I work with them, but because that literally is my favorite one to use. I've featured it on Nifty Tools of the Week before. And then we're gonna hook this one up here to the negative, so we're hooked up to the positive and negative. And then we're going to You've open our Bluetooth app here for testing the battery. Yeah, so I don't have so much of a glare here, maybe. Maybe not. Oh. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and test this one. Let's see, how many cold cranking amps are we? I believe this one is an 800. Pretty much everything's all worn off of that one. But I know this one matches. 800 cold cranking amps on the battery. Okay, so we need to put in for a new battery. Uh, this will, we'll just name it 800. Regular flooded cold cranking amp rated at 800 cold cranking amps. Done. Add to that. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and test the battery. Testing, testing. Testing, attention please. There we go. It says it needs charged. Uh, 689 cold cranking amps. State of health, 74% sitting at 11.9 volts. So uh, the truck has been sitting for about two days now. So uh, we're down at 11.9 volts. Internal resistance, 4.26 mega ohms right there. So state of charge, pretty darn low. So. Probably should have charged this one up ahead of time, but just kind of wanted to get a, a, an uh, initial reading on it. So let's go ahead and uh, disconnect this one. And we'll go over here and connect it up to this battery here. Maybe we'll get that cap off the back one. There we go. Hook that one up there. Okay, let's get a new test on this one. Test again. Picking it up, picking it up. Oh, <laughs> well, we're gonna say there is our issue. We're sitting at zero state of health because 
through the eight cold cranking amps, man. That is weak sauce and a half. I tell you what, 11.9 volts. So it's reading the same voltage as the other battery, even though the ground is unhooked from it there on the back side. So equally charged. So you can see the difference in internal resistance, 4.26 mega ohms. Whereas this one, 75.52 mega ohms of resistance. So ain't nobody got time for that. We have got ourselves pretty much some heavily corroded cells in there and probably a dead cell in there as well. Not looking too good for that one. So uh, this battery is probably just fine. However, that one is pure junk sauce and we're gonna need to replace that one. So let's get to replacing that one battery and then we're gonna check our charging system as a whole because we wanna make sure all of that is fine as well. As well as, might as well get a meter out and check the uh, resistance and the ground cables and our positive cables from there to the jump post there and to here as well, just to make we're sure we're, uh, we're good and we're charging and everything. So we're gonna get this battery swapped out here real quick and then we'll do that. Doesn't that figure? Bunch of junk. Give me my wrench back. Got it. Got it. We're good. You got it, guys. Got it. <sighs> All right. So before I go ahead and uh, tell you guys that I'm unhooking the battery on this one, I want to make sure that I told you that I unhook the negative post on the other battery as well, because if not, you go to take this positive one off of here and you set this positive cable on something else. Guess what? The positive cable is still hooked up to the other battery too. So might as well, just for safe sake, if you're going to take one of these off, go ahead and just unhook all the cables from both batteries. You don't always need a 72 foot pound brute ratchet to be able to remove a battery bolt, but, but, but it helps. And then check it check battery removed. Now in removing this battery, there was a couple of things that I noticed was uh, probably a little bit awry and it looked like it could have been what the cause was to the demise of this battery. So a couple things we had a little bit of corrosion on the positive pole here. Uh, negative had a little bit, but not too bad. And then we go over here onto this other battery and we can see this negative had quite a bit of corrosion to it. So that wasn't helping much of anything. And then I got to thinking, well, I had all these issues with my AC and other stuff over here because earlier on before one of the videos, I didn't have anything wrapped on the exhaust side of this uh, big old turb ski over here. And obviously with the exhaust portion being right here directly next to the battery, it could have had something to do with the demise of that battery internally, getting extra hot, getting extra cold, going back and forth in uh, temperature cycles so much. Hey, it wasn't enough to like bow out the battery or anything. Like we don't see it bulging out too bad along it, but more than likely, I'm gonna say that's probably what caused it. So we're gonna need to remedy that. Well, that's something we should have to remedy, isn't it? Fast forward just a little bit longer here and we're back from the parts store. Picked us up a new battery because we know that one was extra junk. So pretty much about the same thing. 78 series, 800 cold cranking amps, 1000 cranking amps all together. So reserve capacity of 110. Pretty decent battery right there. Uh, picked that one up for right at 100 bucks. I thought that was a pretty decent deal that they gave me on that one. And then got to look in for some uh, heat trays for the batteries. I know the race cars and stuff had fancy shiny outer covers, but dude, they wanted like 70 or 80 bucks for the heat trays and the shields and stuff for these batteries. And I'm not about to do that one. So I uh, went through their clearance aisle and actually found this right here from DEI. Uh, just a heat screen, a 12 by 24 sheet, and fold that one in half, 
and we're going to get about seven inches in length right here, which is about the uh, length of the battery, six, seven inches. And that I think is going to pretty much cover up the majority of the battery and keep that shielded from that big old hot turb ski. Pick that one up for, I think, $9.95, 10 bucks right there. So 10 bucks right there, adhesive back to it. I think that's going to be a pretty good deal and help us to uh, dissipate some of the heat to it. I'm going to have to open it up and kind of trim it around our post right here and make it look at least halfway decent. Did pick up some extra poles because eventually here, going on to the other battery, we've got all of our accessories on these top posts and it just, it looks like crap over here. It's very poor wire, you know, routing on everything and it just it does not look very professional over here so let's go ahead and uh, get that other battery in after we do some trimming on our heat shield Now you guys can see after, you know, I just take a little bit of time on that one. Uh, instead of just willy nilly all sticking it on there and making it overlap and fold all over, I actually made some really nice cuts and everything so it's gonna fold and contour to the exact bit of the battery. Go around the bottom edges just nice with some 45 degree angles cut into it. So yeah, now we've got some sticky backing. Stick this thing on, make it look professional like. check that out custom formed battery heat shield and that sexier than socks on a rooster yeah there we go now the cool thing about all of that heat shielding and all it is able to form fit to all the little contours on the side of the battery so we can make sure we get our battery held down do not throw this one away like a bunch of you other cut rate mechanics do. We just chuck that one. No, reinstall it. We don't need no floppy batteries. All right, where are you going? You're going nowhere. Next thing you cool cats need to see that we get done is we need to get these terminals all nice and cleaned up. So, brush, 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 brush. All right, brush, now that we got brush, her brush. all clean and clear of any corrosion or anything like that, we're going to need to put a little bit of dielectric grease in on the area because we don't want any moisture getting back in and ruining any kind of good connection that we got up in here. So add that in there, good amount of little dielectric grease. Go ahead and reattach it to the battery. Repeat for your ground as well. 
All right, well, while we've got everything here, we might as well fix everything the right way. I got a couple of battery extension uh, terminals for this battery over here that we have all of our accessories kind of plugged into these top terminal posts, and it just looks like junk here on the top section. I don't really want all those wires hanging out there. I'd rather have them tucked down in beside the battery. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull these caps off the batteries here, the covers. I want to clean this one off already. And we're going to swap out our battery bolts for the these extended ones uh, so we can put all of our eyelet bolts and terminals onto the ends instead of hanging out here on top and uh, hopefully route them a little bit cleaner as well. Fortunately that one came apart pretty easily. We got our bolt and just kind of pressed it out because the only thing that actually holds that bolt into place is the rubber grommet section on this cover of the positive side on the side terminal. So we pop that one out and then this is our new one that we're going to be putting in. This short side right here, the stubby side, is going to go into, we'll get this one out of the way, is going to go into the side post of the battery like that one. This will fit flush and seal nicely into the rubber section of our positive cable. And then that will leave this upper portion here with this nut to be able to put all of our four different accessories on. We've got our boost controller, we've got our uh, audio stuff, we've got our remote start things, and we also have our lift pump actuation. So all four of these extra accessories kind of got to tie onto there because we don't want to do any other tying into the box right at this moment. So we're going to get this one slapped in. Thankfully also the positive cable on this one is not corroded at all, but we're going to go ahead and put some dielectric grease on here anyways, just to keep out the corrosion in the future. There we go. You can see that the bolts all tightened down, down inside of there. And uh, now we're going to be able to go ahead and put our one eyelet from there, as well as the eyelet for the battery feed for our sub onto that one and get the nut tightened in there and get everything tucked in behind the battery area. Now getting in here to the negative side, I've got the three negative cables all tied up to one eyelet and you can see how bad the corrosion was on this ground cable right here. It was pretty nasty. So getting this thing all wire brushed off and then we'll put our cap back on, some dielectric grease in there and then get our new extended bolt in for that one as well. Then we got finished product here. Boy, doesn't that not look way, way cleaner rather than having those posts and all these wires hanging out up here. Now here from lower down, everything is hidden back behind the battery and we can see our wires are nicely tucked into those areas. Everything's nice and cleaned off and we have the dielectric grease put on there. So we're not gonna have any corrosion issues down the line as well. Everything's all tucked up. The wiring looks a whole lot better for us. Looking really good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our other battery, the negative cable hooked up over in that area. And then we're going to get this thing started and do a charging system test and do a voltage drop test on our positive cable. So if you guys don't know how to do that, we're gonna get that one done too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah? Yeah. 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 Now that one started a whole lot easier. How about that? When you have both batteries firing, it starts up a whole lot easier. How about them apples? All right, so we're gonna hook up our Bluetooth battery tester to our far battery, and that's just because the alternator, it feeds over to the driver's side one, and it goes from that cable over here to the passenger side one. So if we get a good test here, we're probably gonna have a good charging test over on that other one but we can test both of them if we really wanted to. We're gonna test them here and see what the charging test looks like. So it says uh, for step one, unloaded test, turn off all of our equipment, our lights and everything are off, and we're gonna set to 2,500 to 3,000 RPM and then start testing. So we'll bring our RPMs up. Start test. All right, step two, turn on the lights, our air. Make sure we get all this stuff here. Our 
fan on full blast. We got our brights on. We'll even turn on fog lights and our high beams. All right. And now we'll start testing this one. And it says also bring up to 1500 to 2000 RPM. Start testing. All right, step three. Turn on the lights only. Turn off our HVAC and our extra beams and shit. All right, turn on the lights only, set the engine at idle, and run that test. And we have our results. Lights turned off. All right, charging voltage, we're at 14.46 volts. Uh, voltage in high RPM, 14.27. Uh, we've got six millivolts. Voltage ripple, which is well within our standard. Looks like we're all uh, good to go. It says charging system okay. If we wanted to share it, we could go up here and hit the share button, send that to our phone to save for a later date if we really wanted to. So good to go there. Let's do a uh, voltage drop across our leads on the positive side just to make sure our positive cables are good too. All right, so now we're gonna be doing a voltage drop test on our system. The one positive cable is gonna be hooked up to the positive side over there because in the way of the charging system, we're going from the alternator to this battery, this positive, and then across the motor in the back all the way over to that positive cable. So we're wanting to look at our voltage drop of the positive side. On a meter, when you've got it hooked up to voltage, pretty much between the negative and the positive cable is like a little calculator. So it's gonna take your positive minus your negative and that's what it's gonna be. So if we hook up our negative onto just a regular ground over here, we can see that we have 14.35 volts right there. So that is our drop between positive and negative. That is voltage drop. So obviously it is using all of that 14 point whatever volts. Now we wanna know the drop of our positive cable only. So we're gonna take this lead and we're gonna put it on our positive cable over on this side. And we're gonna see what our reading is. leveled out so we can see that our voltage drop of the positive cable is 0 0.015 volts which 15 millivolts I'd say that is a pretty darn good range for our battery cable so we know that our positive side is working correctly and since we were able to test our charging system from that battery the negative in the ground is good as well that's good one less thing well, for having the battery and cables redone, I think we are looking pretty darn good in this area. Uh, the engine bay has been cleaned up quite nicely. I think that battery looks great over there. The heat shielding is going to do its job, keep all the heat away from that big turbo. I know we already did all the heat wrap on the downpipe and everything. So that's just one more step that we're going to be doing to keep that battery staying up to goodness for the time being or as long as we possibly can. We've got that one all wrapped up. The wires look a lot better over here on the driver's side. Everything all nice and tucked away. So job well done on the battery and the cables. All right, now for our last little bit, if you can see any difference here, we've got our vent visor here, but not here. And that is because uh, Mr. Savage here, the old house wolf, decided that he was gonna get a little hungry while I was loading or helping the guy load my toolbox up on the carrier a couple weeks back. Uh, I had the window down a little bit and he decided he wanted to reach out and just kind of take a little snag off because he was pissed I put him in the back seat. So that one's gone now. Let's have a look inside here. I want to show you guys this real quick. You want to hop up in? Come on. There we go, hop up in. I picked up this uh, little thing in here. Let's get a kind of zoom in look at it. Picked up uh, this from Duluth Trading for dogs in the back seat. Uh, it was like 45, 47 bucks for the back seat uh, piece. And I was super surprised. This fire hose material, it's super tough, especially for the old house wolf here and chewing on things and everything. Well, that lasts, but rip our piece for our vent visor. It ended up like this. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think Savage mm -hmm. got a little mm -hmm. bit hungry on this one, guys. Totally ate it up. Yeah. So now, Savage, are you gonna be fixing the vent visor? You have some Zalakout be in it? your beard. Well, I got one. You gonna fix it for me? I don't think he's gonna do it for us. Well, you sit there and look pretty and don't chew this one up while I'm doing it. Well, this is also gonna go to answer another couple of questions that a lot of people had about the Raptor lining and everything sticking to it. Uh, they wanted to know whether I had a bunch of issues with getting the vent visors to stick to it or the badges and stuff on the front of the truck because I put the uh, 2500 Duramax emblems onto the hood like the LMLs. Well, pretty much all I did was take your little alcohol prep pad here and especially since uh, this one's been kind of dirty for a while. We want to get these all nice and cleaned off, get the surface all prepped up here. We got our last bit cleaned off and prepped up right there. And like I said, before, even when I did it, uh, right after doing the paint job, this is literally all I did to put these vent visors on. Uh, it's not gonna hinder sticking to this Raptor liner. As a matter of fact, as you guys could tell, it takes a house wolf to rip these things off and it came off in pieces. <laughs> so, get this one lined up side to side, evenly across, and get her pressed into place. It's perfect! All right, well, boys and girls, that's about all the information that I've got for you today. If you guys have any other questions about what I did on the battery or as far as doing the voltage drop testing or any of the other testing with the Bluetooth battery tester, feel free to leave some comments down below or message me directly over at my email. I always leave that in the description and I will also leave the link to the battery tester as well down in the description for you guys to check that one out. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. We've got a lot more stuff coming up. We've got some more stuff going on in the Duramax. If you guys saw while we were in the engine bay, got a little bit of a coolant leak in there. I think we're coming from our thermostat housing, but we're gonna have to test that, get it figured out and fix that one. And then we've got a couple of other things with a stubborn exhaust manifold bolt that keeps on coming out. So we're gonna do that one. Stay tuned, hit that bell notification if you haven't already. Thanks, and as always, you guys stay awesome.